a slow rolling fog, atmosphere, horror, spooky universal monster movies are incredible and it is the season we're gonna dive into a bunch of them right now. I am Perry, this is Koi, and you are watching Collider Movie Club. This episode of Collider Movie Club is a paid promotion brought to you by Movies Anywhere. Movies Anywhere is the app that brings together your favorite digital movies into one convenient place. And now a brand new feature called My Lists will let you organize and personalize your digital collection in two very cool new ways. First, you can let the Movies Anywhere app do the work. It uses a unique algorithm that creates an auto-curated suggested list based on your purchases and watching habits. And second, you can create lists all on your own or even tweak the auto-generated lists. Organize and categorize your movies however you'd like. Download the free Movies Anywhere app, sync your collections from different digital retailers into one place, and start organizing your movies your way today. We have a very cool episode for you right now. We also have a very cool giveaway that I'm going to tease. We're not going to do it just yet. Stay tuned for that. But we got some movies to give away, and they happen to be the classic Universal monster movies. And we have a favorite to dive into that is, I, I didn't think it'd be mutual because you're such a horror buff. Yes. And like when we went through the Spider-Man list, it was crazy. So let's see what we think of these four movies. Okay. Wait First a minute. One. I'm going to I'm going to count down. Okay. I'm going to say 3 2 1 and then we each say our favorite of the four. To and you, just so you guys know, the four that we're addressing today are Dracula, Frankenstein, Invisible Man, and also Wolfman. So, all right. Favorite, ready? Yep. 3 2 1. Invisible, invisible man. man. Did you say an invisible man? It's so good and so holds up, and the special effects are arguably better now. Like, they, to, to, to look back at it, they feel better now. Because 90 years later, I see way less credible stuff in the theater. Well, This looks so good. It's so impressive. It's so atmospheric. You're so invested. And it's an anti-hero. Hero, like, you're, you're following a villain. Part of me can kind of understand if someone out there is like, well, these effects aren't like the effects that we get today. Like, that is a fair point. They're better. But... I do think I think that the the effects, the blocking and the physicality just so well suits the tone of that movie. So I can't necessarily say it's dated and not good anymore because it plays together well with what the movie is. It and, felt and so the tangible to me. Exploring. It's no, it like it, and like every time there was a moment, like a cutaway, like they just they know when to edit moments of just like horror and yeah. terror, and it's so beautiful. I just love the exploration of that character too. Like the idea of because when you think about it, you know, if I don't want to say this really, but if you had the power of invisibility and you could do something with it, it would be difficult to block out the temptation to do things that you shouldn't be doing. Yeah. It's just a matter of knowing where to draw the line. And and uh, Griffin does not know where to draw the line. And he, he loses himself to that ability. An invisible man can rule the world. Nobody will see him come. Nobody will see him go. He can rob, break, and kill. <laughs> and the supporting cast is so good because you're so invested in this journey because you're so interested in these other people's lives. And the setting, this tavern, this amazing, like... It's very small and contained, but it feels like it could affect the whole world. There's really only two major set pieces, but since they're talking about these insane options of what could happen, it feels like a global threat while being terrifying in a little town. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's also just scary thinking of what we're capable of when you think that you are not going to be held responsible for your actions. Yeah. I mean, that's, that is essentially go that plays into what I was saying before in terms of, you know, like, the temptation to do things that you're not supposed to, like, go through the roof when you're in a situation where you are invisible and no one's going to say, you know, I saw you do it. Yeah. You're going to jail. I mean, you know, clearly someone will put a stop to it in some way, shape, or form eventually. But I let, I kind of understand why he gets caught up in that whirlwind of temptation to do certain things. And you really are invested in the relationships that he left behind. Yeah. You're really invested with the doctors. And they do this great uh, line of exposition about, like, the dog and how the science came to be. And there's this, like, mad scientist aspect of it that doesn't feel unreal. Well, that's how this movie gets into into, you know, those those real human qualities that we wrestle with often. It, you know, it shows you this, you know, ideal scenario where you essentially have a cool superpower, yeah. but then it shows you what you're losing by abusing that power. So when you walk away from the movie, you get a pretty valuable lesson on where to draw the line with this stuff. And I love that there's some scenes that are, like, visually stunning, whether it's just, like, the cigarette scene 
or, you know, like I said earlier in unwrapping, but also the voiceover mm -hmm. work. Because so much of this is is captivating us up here. So we're imagining what we're not seeing. And there's something really spooky about someone wearing clothes over invisibility that, like, we intellectually know that someone like you or me has bandages around them. But the entire time they sold me so well, I'm like, there's an invisible man wearing yeah. a... It, it, you're sold on this world. One of my favorite parts of the movie is when he's like, like, here's a piece for you. Yeah. And you. And... You, and just the, the visual of they seeing that? that piece by piece get revealed is, like, still to this day, extremely powerful. 90 years old, I don't know how they did that. I, I love that I was watching that. Like, I understand a lot of modern special effects more than this because they took the nose off, and I was like, how is that working? That's also how Claude Rains carries himself yeah. in the role, too, and his delivery. I feel like, and th this is true of all of the Universal Monster movies that we're going to discuss, I feel like when you have a supernatural character or supernatural scenario like this, you can only sell your monster if the actor playing the monster like yeah. believes in it and gives 110% of themselves to the role. And I think all the individuals we're going to discuss do that. Now, I got to own something online. Uh -oh. I got to just say it uh -oh. and I'm going to get guff for it. I had never seen these movies. Any of them? I think maybe as a small enough child that I remembered flashes of imagery, but not yeah. like I didn't have them up here. Any of them. Okay. So I really, as an adult experiencing such classic cinema, always worry it can't live up to the expectation. Like, I always, I'm always worried about that. Each and every one of these was what I wanted them to be with the expectations being impossibly high. And that's because of what you just said. Everyone that played these classic archetype monsters was so invested. You're in. Yeah, I I keep wanting to jump ahead to our next ones, but I should tell everyone about the giveaway, right? Because they get to have it's what a, I just experienced. It's a really cool giveaway. I'm very excited about this. So what we have are five codes for some of you out there, and what that code gets you is it gets you all four of the movies that we're talking about, and uh, like that's like I a had crazy never, cool collection I had never experienced them, so I'm jealous. So you get Invisible Man, you also get Dracula, Frankenstein, and the Wolfman. And on top of that, it's a very special release for these movies because you're getting them on 4K. They've been in remastered 4K. with such detail and beauty. I love how these look. I was so overwhelmed with how clear and precise. Yes. Oh, these feel great. So anyone out there who wins one of these codes, you get them in digital form, but they're also available on Blu-ray in 4K too. Yeah, and it's such a cool. Yeah, I echo what Koi said. They looked incredible. So get ready, because now I know you want these codes. This is so, how you watch them. We got five of them to give away. And in order to enter to possibly snag one, all you got to do is hop on your Twitter account. You tweet at Koi. You tweet at me and also at Collider. And we want you to tell us who your favorite universal monster is. So write that tweet out. Add the hashtag movies anywhere at the end. And then you will be entered to win four incredible movies that really... Like changed the changed they the changed course, cinema. Changed the course of cinema and also made some of these characters like the most iconic, yeah. not even just movie characters, but like characters, period. And you get all four, which is really fun because they, they beautifully tie together atmospherically. They're not uh, a, a thing that ties together with story. There's this feeling when you're watching all of these that makes you feel immersed in a world. That's what I got most out of it was I loved living like this for the week. Well, one of the cool things about all four of these movies and a quality about all four of them that holds up exceptionally well is they're all incredibly atmospheric. Yeah. I mean, they just... They just suck you in. And I think, um, I was about to say in particular with Dracula and, and I, the I Googled Man. the locations for Dracula. So I was I so invested. You. I was like, where was this awesomeness? For whatever reason, I feel like I'm also more inclined to give like atmospheric credit to a movie that takes place outside like Wolfman yeah. where you got that like that Fog. smoky forest <laughs> atmosphere. But like it really does apply to everything from, from the castle to the interiors of Invisible Man even. Yep. But that, that production design and the way that they film all of these movies is something that is still just as good today as it ever was. And we should talk about Dracula because it, its atmosphere to me, the scope of the castle and the different worlds within the castle, like there was some put together, there was some in disrepair. There was so much interesting behind the scenes story in in movie. Like you wondered what was going on right before they started rolling in Dracula's life. You wondered like how we'd gotten to this point. There's so much backstory. And that's because Bela Lugosi is so Dracula. Mm -hmm. He's so commanding of every frame he's in. You can totally do the look, can't you? Oh, of well, course it, you can. Yeah, it's the... Yeah, you got it. Look into the camera, Koi. Give, give the viewers the full effect. 
<laughs> I like I can't move my eyebrows like that, so I, can I make, just can't do it. I can do this inverted thing too. I can do the anti Dracula where I'm just very concerned. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is more fun. <laughs> that that's one of the most wild things about his performance is that so much of it is just, just giving gaze. that look. And he's and he like commands at all times. Remember when he yeah. like beckons her over and he's like this, I was like, I get it, Bella. It's it's so pa- it's just a look yeah. and it's so powerful. But even when it's going beyond that look, his his just general presence in the role and and the authority that he exudes is a big reason why his Dracula is such a commanding force in that movie and is a big reason why that Dracula is is scary too. Yeah. There's a scene where someone looks out the window and he's like, there's a wolf running across the lawn. I was like, I believe you. Like, I bought <laughs> Bela Lugosi as a vampire so much. I was like, dude's probably a wolf right now. Like, Aww. I was so invested in his portrayal. <laughs> and also, uh, to move on to the next one with Frankenstein. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. The amount of empathy, the amount of yes. sorrow, the amount of sadness I felt for Frankenstein, I couldn't have prepared myself Talk for. about a good adaptation, too. It's like Mary Shelley's source material is, is is a classic, but that's an example of where you take classic source material and you actually make something different, but power, like yeah. extremely powerful with it in terms of what they did to Frankenstein's monster to make him a different character. And it's, it's that sympathy that crushes me. I mean, I guess this is the cliche scene to point out, but like the scene with the little girl, like I've seen Frankenstein more times than I can count every single time I watch that scene and also the scene of him reaching up yeah. at the light. It just, like my heart crumbles to pieces. I love the old film stock for the black and white fire. The fire at the end looks so stunning and emotional because we've gone through this journey with Frankenstein. So the fire became its own character in in this beautiful textured way. And that scene really spoke to me. And I, I don't know what it was, but I'd been on this journey with Frankenstein. Well, Frankenstein's monster. Let's be fair before the comments roll in. Frankenstein's <laughs> monster. But I was on this journey with him. So I was invested in the flames that, that were involved with him. And, and I also love Dr. Frankenstein so much. He is such, he's having a ball. Con- he is a proto Sam Rockwell. Colin Clive is excellent in that role. Yeah. He, he's great, and of course we have to mention how good Boris Karloff is he, as stunned. Frankenstein's mom. I mean, it's a similar thing to Bela Lugosi. We're so a huge human. You know, there's there's a lot going on with that exceptional makeup, but it, it really largely is about the way that he carries himself in the role that will convey the necessary fear in, you know, being face-to-face with such a brute force who yeah. is capable of doing very dangerous, deadly things. But then at the same time, you need him to be able to exude that like that confusion and that hurt from yeah. essentially being brought into the world against his will and having the capability of being able to interact and be a source of good, but not even being given the opportunity to be that because he's not treated fairly. And the whole Frankenstein family being the evil ones. Like there's so much malicious intent from the family Frankenstein and he's just trying to survive. He's just not sure what he is and he's going. And because of the physicality of Boris Karloff, Karloff, he felt eight feet tall. Like there's so much where I'm like, how did they do this? Was this where the frame was set up staggered? Like it felt like there was this giant chunk of human being. And that's so important for the story in the frame. You really buy a hulking beast of a monster Mm -hmm. and it's a guy with 30s makeup on. And I'm so in. I was so impressed by these movies. This this is another one. Like I know we both love Invisible Man, but yeah. this is oh my one of God. my favorite of I'm the watch classic these Universal monster now. movies. Like this changed my Halloween tradition. Like this was so good. It's got. I know what's going to become my Halloween's now. Yeah. Well, you own them. And I do. A whole bunch of other people out there could own them too. What do you think of Wolfman? Oh yeah, is bitten by a werewolf and lives, becomes a werewolf himself. I was so impressed with Wolfman's tension. I yeah. was so impressed with the fact that I was I was worried they wouldn't give us Wolfman until way late because I was worried about I was worried about budget because that's how my brain goes. <laughs> I was like they're not going to be able no. to afford the Wolfman. Is that's how I think of movies? And then immediately we're in and immediately we've got tension and then every time Wolfman comes back it looks so much cooler than I was expecting. And you're so 
in the woods. And I think that's the best compliment I can give it. You're in the yeah. woods with a wolf man and you're just so scared for everyone and you're so invested in the wolf man himself that you like want him to succeed, but you're also like these people shouldn't be murdered, but you're like but they kind of deserve it. Like it's so good. It it really is. And I love I love the the prosthetics and the makeup design. Yeah. When it comes to the visual effects though, to be completely honest, it's a little more of like an exciting quality of the movie to me that comes more from my appreciation of seeing VFX and in particular VFX as they pertain to werewolf transformations sure. evolve over the years. I mean, we've seen some like wildly incredible things lately, but to see where it all started with those overlap you know, fades. Yeah, the overlap <laughs> fades on his feet and stuff like that. It's, you know, and a lot of these movies that we're talking about were were the first of their kind back there. They were I mean, literally they overlapping wowed. film stock. They yeah. like they didn't have a computer because it was 32 to do an overlap fade. So this was amazing technology. The scene that really blew me away in a positive with the special effect was when he's leaning against the tree yeah. and he starts to have the experience of figuring out what he is. There's like so much spiraling imagery and so much emotion in which clips they show and there's like him thinking back and it's just old, old, old camera tricks but you're invested as much as you are with like a $200 million movie. Yeah, it, it, like it, I still think it's very effective within the context of this movie, but then it, you know, it just like, it fills my heart and it fills me with excitement yeah. to be able to see what we have now, what it was standing upon and what it started with. These were so good. I'm going to give more old movies a chance. Yes. I'm actually uh, problematic when it comes to like pre 60s movies. I just have a hard time. These I was so invested in all four of these that I'm going to actually look at my own expectations because I love these. If I had you, such a good time. If you need more classic monster movie recommendations, yeah. I've got some that come to mind. All right. That is it for this episode. But we must remind you that this episode of Collider Movie Club is a paid promotion brought to you by Movies Anywhere. Movies Anywhere's new My Lists feature gives you more ways to organize and personalize your digital collection than ever. You can either create lists all on your own or let Movies Anywhere do the work for you with a unique algorithm that creates suggested lists based on your purchase and watching habits. So, if you'd like to put the My List feature to use and possibly discover some great new movies in the process, simply download the free Movies Anywhere app, sync your collections from different digital retailers into one place, and start organizing your movies your way today. All right, we're out of here. We will see you very soon with another episode of Collider Movie Club. Do the eyebrows. I can't. We're going to teach Perry to do the eyebrows. They don't move. We're going to get there. <laughs>